I'm Rick Lober. Um, my wife and I moved from Tallahassee, Florida to Asheville, North Carolina a little over four years ago. My personal experience with uh, sexual abuse uh, by a priest uh, occurred when I was a junior attending uh, St. Pius X Prep Seminary in Uniondale, New York. Um, I was in a class and one of the teachers um, we had all priests as teachers, except for perhaps language, and uh, one of them took a liking to me. And uh, I was in one of his classes, I think he taught physics and some other class, and uh, over a period of time he would spend time talking to me after class or ask me to meet him after class. Uh, had me involved in special projects with him, and um, kind of and I was, of course, you know, wow, a, a priest, you know, reaching out to me. I came from a, a fatherless family. Uh, it was all matriarchs, my great-grandmother, my grandmother, my mother. And I was certainly sexually naive compared to maybe others. And over a period of time, he befriended me and he would take me on trips. And um, I, one particular one that comes to mind was uh, he took me to Washington, D.C., <clears throat> for like a two or three night trip and during that time um, in the, he used the guise of I'm trying to help you which I was told you know, was a sin and in the confessional he started to talk about that and he asked me to talk about it in more detail basically continued to elevate that and continued the basically m manipulating me in a way that I felt like this was what I needed to do if I was going to be saved. It was supposed to help me with my sinfulness. And um, he, in the course of that, he engaged in uh, several sexual acts with me. It went on for a period of months, probably about six months, and Somewhere around the end of my junior year, I just hit a level that I said, this is, this is really uncomfortable. This, is, this can't be right. And uh, I basically cut off all connections to him. After it happened, and I never told anyone, at the same time, I pretty much at that point walked away from the church. Were you angry at the church? Uh, yes. Uh, once I realized more fully what he had done to me and how he had abused me, um, I was very angry. And I was angry at him. I mean, I, I had wonderful contacts and relationships with other members of the faculty and with other priests, but I just was very angry and, I mean, and hated him. During the course of the conversation, he brought up the name and he said, uh, do you know that this priest has recently died? Well, it was the priest that abused me. And I just caught myself. Uh, all of a sudden, my body just froze. My face, I could tell, was just like, what just happened? What did he... And all of a sudden, all of the stuff that I buried started rushing back into my mind. And... Uh, I, he could see my reaction. He could see I was visibly shaken and, and knew without ever saying it directly what had happened to me. Not the details, but that I had been abused. After the grand jury in Pennsylvania came out with that scathing report, and Father Pat Cahill was getting a lot of comments and chatter from parishioners with all different feelings, and he felt that something needed, they needed to be spoken to or be given an opportunity to be heard. And in September, he uh, opened up a parish council meeting and said, we're going to have the parish council meeting will be exclusively on the clergy sexual abuse issue and the church's handling or lack of handling of it. Um, we had about 150 to 200 people show up. Most of the parishioners that spoke that night in September, they were not as upset of course they're upset with any child being victimized. Yes, but the most anger was expressed at the lack of going, 
you have had decades upon decades upon decades to fix this, and you haven't done it. And at the, toward the tail end of the about an hour and a half meeting, um, uh, I went ahead and I felt that something was now calling me to speak from the, a victim's perspective. I was shaking like a leaf. Uh, my voice quivered. Um, it was not something that I wanted to do. It was something that listening to our, my fellow parishioners talk, I felt we, we, they needed this and we needed this. About a week later, Father Pat Cahill asked me and two other women from our parish if they would serve on what he called he, uh, the Child and Youth Protection Committee. And uh, he came in apologetically. And then we had a conversation after about 10 or 15 minutes, just person to person, talking to him about, we're not here as an adversary. We're here as a help. And we can help you, Bishop. You can help us, certainly, but it's not a one-sided street. It, we need to go out, we, we need to put, do this together so that as we do break down these roadblocks, as we do come together with, with workable, meaningful reforms and changes, we can then serve as messengers of the credibility of what is being done. And when I came out of that meeting, I came out with a sense of joy that I saw and listened to him and saw in him uh, a genuine openness. If God could forgive me for my decades of things I've done, the way I'm going to show God's love and give it back is by me forgiving someone like the priest that abused me. And so, so it's no longer buried, but he's forgiven by me. And in fact, I, just like uh, on Sunday, I pray uh, for uh, those that I've lost, the loved ones that I've lost, my mother, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, um, and I include him among those prayers.